Hi, Seraphin here. A little belated, but happy new year. We are still in the new year mood, aren't we? Blue skies, fresh air, a windy day, it's a perfect day. So because someone once said clarifications are beautiful, I'm going to be starting this new year of 2023 by shedding light on one of the many myths or misinformation about Tang Zhong or Yu Dei. This one is about Tang Zhong wanting 75% hydration. Out of the many amusing and annoying myths about Tang Zhong or Yu Dei, this one is worth talking about. It's a myth that's been shared over a thousand times, believed by many trusting home or professional bakers, as is bound to happen because it is widely spread around by a normally reputable site. I wanted to make this video because I get asked about this a lot by many people, so I thought I'd clear it all up. In my previous video on Tangchong or Yudane, I actually talked a bit about this at the end of the video. In this video, I won't be repeating everything I talked about in that video, so do check it out if you'd like to know more about all that. This time, I decided to gather extra facts, scientific facts, on this topic to complement the thorough explanation of the previous video. Okay, so here is what this article says, and I quote, when you're using the Tangzhong method, you want your recipe's hydration to be about 75%. Why? Because when using Tangzhong, some of the liquid in the dough is trapped by the pre-cooked slurry, the Tangzhong, and thus plays no part in the dough's texture. As far as hydration is concerned, it's as if that liquid isn't even there. The article then goes on to show us an experiment with what scientists has called a control, a dough with a hydration of 63% without Tangzhong, labeled A, followed up by one using Tangzhong without increasing the recipe's hydration to 75%, B, and another one using Tangzhong after increasing the recipe's hydration to 75%, C. Also from the article, the Tangzhong uses between 5 to 10% of the flour in the recipe and is composed of one part flour to five parts liquid by weight. To cut the story short, we are then shown a lineup of the crumb shots of A, B, and C. And then here comes the conclusion, 75% hydration plus Tangzhong is the winner. Okay, there are a few things to unpack about this article. First off, it's based on a one-shot subjective experiment, which unfortunately does not adhere to any proper scientific method. Why would I say that? Well, scientists usually perform multiple experiments to get more accurate data that can be trusted and replicated, instead of just doing an experiment once where things can happen by chance. So clearly this article is based on a subjective experiment. Now, there's nothing wrong with a subjective experiment, except that the quality of any subjective experiment, as the name implies, is based on or influenced by personal feelings, tastes, and opinions. Now, let's quickly compare this subjective experiment to a scientific and objective experiment about the same subject. So, let's pull up this paper and go straight to Table 1. Look at the column labeled SLV, specific low volume, it shows that an increase in the percentage of flour used for udene has a slightly negative effect on the bread-specific loaf volume, which generally means the bread height and width suffer as the percentage of flour used increases, as shown in this image from the paper. Now, let's compare this image to the test result from the article. What do we get? It appears that the crumb of a dough with 40% of the total flour being used for gelatinized starch ended up looking way better than sample B from the article. And the tangzhong in the article was made with only 5-10% to of the dodo's total flour. So it's quite likely that one of the experiments is wrong, or yudane is way better than tangzhong. If you believe it's the latter, then, well, you should stop using Tangzhong immediately. Use Yudane instead, because it seems to be much better. Oh, but wait, have you watched my previous video on Tangzhong? Tangzhong method as you know it sucks. So to explain this, you need to know that Tangzhong and the alternative that it's frequently compared to, Yudane, are in essence the same thing. Okay, so obviously one of these two experiments must be wrong. Subjectively, I can hazard a guess on which one it is. 
Based on my own experience of making so many breads with the ratio of tangzhong being one part of flour to five parts of water, I've never seen any of my breads turn out that badly. So I'll guess that the result from the article must be the result of a flawed execution when making either the tangzhong or the dough. Judging from the use of the one to five ratio, it probably happened during the preparation of the tangzhong. Perhaps too much water evaporated, which is one of the most common beginner mistakes. Hence, sample B of the article is probably a crumb shot from a dough with a very low hydration. To avoid that, you can use an infrared thermometer to monitor the temperature of the slurry while it's being heated on the stove, and stop it once it reaches 65 degrees Celsius. The real temperature can be a bit higher than that, but that's around the range that we want. I have to remind you, though, uh, because we don't have any access to the specifics of the article's experiment, this is my opinion. It's subjective, so as I mentioned before, it is based on personal feeling, tastes, and opinions. So please take it with a grain of salt. Likewise, the article. Then again, you can actually do a simple experiment and try things out for yourself, assuming you're familiar with this Tangchong method. And then you can give me your opinion. So here's the experiment you can do. Prepare one part of flour and five parts of water. Measure their combined weight, let's call it W1. Make the tangzhong by cooking the mixture on a pan. Once the tangzhong has cooled, you can weigh it again. Let's call this weight W2. The difference of W2 and W1 is the amount of water you lose due to evaporation. Of course, assuming you haven't dropped any flour during the process. With a tangzhong, you can then make a final dough with the recipe given in the article and bake it. Tell me what you get. If you get a bread with a shape as bad as shown in sample B of the article, and you did not lose any water during the preparation of tangzhong, then you can subjectively agree with the article. But if you lose water during the preparation of tangzhong, well, you get my point of view. And one more, if you do not lose water and get a great tangzhong bread, then welcome to the tangzhong party. If you get the last one, you deserve praise because you know how to make tangzhong properly, even with that crazy one to five ratio. Regardless though, all these are subjective opinions, mine included. So to get an objective view, we need a more scientific perspective. Without the relevant scientific equipment and expertise at home, the next best alternative is to browse through the sea of scientific papers on this subject, which happens to be quite a lot. This is my usual pathway to take. We live in a connected world. After all, all sorts of information are just a few clicks away. And although I don't have the privilege of having accumulated decades of experiences that could sharpen my intuition, I can rely on science to understand and appreciate the many things around me. So the next thing I'm going to do is again to compare the results of this article to this paper. All right, now let's move on to investigate this statement. I'm not going to go into the details of starch Latinization, retrogradation, and synergesis again, as I've already talked about the subject at length in our previous video on Tangzhong. It's safe to say here that the liquid in the tangzhong is definitely there, and it does play a major role in the dough's texture. I can easily debunk that misleading statement by using table one of this paper again. So let's assume the article is correct in assuming that the water trapped in the tangzhong or yudani plays no part in the dough, and as a result, because no additional liquid is being added to the dough, sample B suffers in height and volume which amounts to the decrease in the specific loaf volume of the bread. Judging from the picture, sample B appears to be about 20 to 30% smaller than the control, sample A. We see from table one, increasing the percentage of flour used for Udeti to 40% will result in a decrease in specific loaf volume of about 10%. But in the article, the percentage of flour used for tangzhong is said to be between 5 to 10%. So how on earth could that have happened? How could the bread shrink by so much? With a percentage of flour for tangzhong used in the article, the decrease should be in a two to four range only. So how do we account for it being 20 to 30% less than the control? If the article is based on scientific research, we can expect to have the numbers for gas retention of the dough and or gassing power. 
so we can assess what went wrong. If the GP is way off, maybe the yeast is the problem. If the GRD is wrong, then perhaps it's the handling of the dough, etc. But since we aren't provided with all of those numbers, I can only guess, again, that someone messed up the preparation of the tang zhong. Okay, let's take a look at sample C of the article now. Said to be from a bread with a hydration raised to 75%. Again, this is unnecessary and impractical. Look at table one again. This time, let's look at the Farina graph's water absorption measurements. The water absorption is the percentage of water used to guide us in bread baking. It's sort of the percentage of hydration for an optimal dough. So in essence, we can think of it as the hydration used in our final dough, more or less. For the increase in 5 to 10% of flour used for tang zhong, the farina graph water absorption can only take on an increase of less than 2%. By cranking up the hydration to 75%, as is suggested in the article, about a 19% increase, a number way beyond the water absorption of the dough with 40% of the total flour being used for tang zhong or yudane, it's quite clearly absurd. So if you properly make your tang zhong without losing too much water due to evaporation, and then you raise the hydration to 75% when you prepare your dough, you should be ready to find yourself handling a sticky and messy dough made with, frankly, too much water. However, on the other hand, if you mess up with your tang zhong preparations and lose just the right amount of water, which was then balanced out by the additional water, you might get lucky and end up with a good bread. But then again, on the next try, it's another toss of a coin again. You have no idea whether you might get a good bread or end up with a wet and sticky dough. This kind of misinformation, along with the Tang Zhong 1 to 5 ratio, are unnecessary hurdles for anyone trying to really appreciate this method of making bread. Tang Zhong or Yudane is really very simple, and its simplicity is the ultimate beauty of this method. So the workflow to convert any recipe to Tang Zhong or Yudane is really very simple. Decide on the amount of flour you want to use for Tang Zhong or Yudane. The recommended range is around 10 to 30 percent. Then make the Tang Zhong Yudane as we explained in our previous video with one part of flour to two parts of water. Let it cool down and put it in the fridge overnight to let it retrograde. When you're ready to make your final dough, reduce the amount of water and flour used for tang zhong or yudane from the original recipe. Mix in the tang zhong or yudane into the final dough. Very simple and convenient and makes a whole world of difference in your bread. There's no need to go through all those hoops and loops and adjust the hydration and add extra steps. No. It's so simple and easy. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks for watching and bye!